Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Boom Boxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host. And we have Duke, our co-host here. And I'm going to do some questions and answers. And after that, I'm going to show you guys this mini keg build that I did. And tell you about some things I like about it, some things that I'm going to change. I'm actually going to rebuild this one. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right. Let's see if I can get Duke to come back. I'll answer the question about Duke in a minute. Uh, first question I've gotten, uh, oh, by the way, welcome back to our Saturday Night Jam session as well. I'm redoing this video because I had to get me uh, something to drink here. I put some Hawaiian Punch uh, sugar-free things in a water bottle. So that's what I'm drinking right now. Okay, how did I get started in building these boom boxes? Well, I got to go back in time a little bit. Um, about 30, well, I mean, I go back even further. I've always loved radio as a kid. I've always loved um, talk radio and regular radio, just radio in general. I've just loved radio. There's always something fascinating about it to me. So ever since I was young, I would like to have a radio next to my bed that I listen to, whether it's a clock radio or what have you. And about, oh, six or seven years ago, I had a bookshelf system. I think I bought it at a Craigslist or something next to the bed, and the tuner started going out. Now, I have to go back in time and let you guys know that I used to build speaker systems and sound systems and stuff. I took electronics in high school for two years. I also worked at Radio Shack for almost four years, so I've got an electronics background. And I've put in many, many car stereos, helped my friends out for the things. I even had a little car stereo business for a while. So I'm not a stranger to electronics, but I've never built anything like this before. So my radio started going out, and I wanted to find another bookshelf system. But I wanted something with AM, because I listened to a lot of AM radio. That's far I really got into Bluetooth. So... I went to Walmart, I went to Best Buy, I didn't find anything I liked. I started hitting pawn shops. I must have went to 13 or 14 pawn shops around the greater Houston area where I live. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I got a summertime cold. There's Simon, come here. Simon. And uh, couldn't find anything I liked. I did find one, but it was kind of overpriced. It was missing a, the subwoofer, and I just... I don't know. I just wasn't happy. I thought, you know, I wonder if I could build me something. So I went on YouTube, and I found a guy that built a Bluetooth speaker, a radio with a car stereo with speakers out of a toolbox. And I thought, you know, that's pretty cool. I could use something like that. So I went out. I'd never ordered anything from Amazon before, so I bought everything I needed from the store, like the voltage gauge I got from an auto parts store. I bought the toolbox from Home Depot. I bought the speakers from Best Buy. So I really spent a lot more than it would have cost me if I ordered it on uh, online with all the parts. But it's okay. I still use that box to this day. Um, I ended up building it on my kitchen table of all places. I had, didn't have a setup like I do now. And um, that was kind of cool. And then I started seeing people build them out of ammo cans. And I thought that was neat. And my, my best friend, George... Um, came by to look at it. He goes, hey, man, could you could you build me something like that? I said, yeah, yeah, I, I think we could. So we made him a little uh, boom box out of a little plastic ammo box. And he's like, hey, that's pretty cool. And then some other friends started asking. I thought, you know, I wonder if I could, I could sell these and make a little bit of money. And uh, sure enough, it just kind of took off from there. And it was really slow in the beginning. Uh, there would be months go by where I couldn't sell any of them. I almost quit. I just got so frustrated thinking, man, nobody wants to buy this stuff. So I just, uh, I was about to give up and then I'd, I'd sell a few here, a few there. And I, of course, I'm learning how to do it better and better. Um, my first ones were not that great, but you learn something on each one. Now I've made probably over 300. I don't know. I lost track. So that's basically how I got started doing this and um now it's um a part-time job i do work a regular job monday through friday 
and I do this in my spare time after work and on the weekends and uh, I enjoy it I really do uh, so anyway next question was how many states are my builds in well I haven't really sat down and done an official count, but I know right now I'm, I'm up to over 30 states that I have them in. And um, I have some states that have multiple boxes in. Um, I have a lot in Florida. I have a lot, in, I think I have about 12 or 13 in California, and I think I've got about close to 15 in Florida. Got a lot in Florida, got a lot in Texas. I live in Texas. Um, I have several in Louisiana. I know I have two in Washington State, or three in Washington State, actually. And um, all across the, the country. Of course, there are still some states that I haven't put them in yet. Um, still trying to get Alaska and Hawaii. I almost had one go to Hawaii. The guy backed out after about a week of us talking. So that was disappointing. Still haven't heard from anybody in Alaska yet. And I do have a gentleman, he lives live here in Texas, but every Thanksgiving he goes camping in Mexico. So he takes his box down to Mexico. And I made one for another soldier that was going to Korea. So I know that box went to Korea. And I have another guy that I built one for. He's working down in Aruba. So I had one actually go to Aruba. So I've had three that have left the country that I know of. So... Um, would I like to get one in all 50 states? Yes, that's my goal, is to have one in every state. And hopefully that'll happen. I, like I said, I need to sit down one day and look at a map of the U.S. and go back and figure out exactly how many I have. But I believe it's close to 30 states now that I have them in. Um, next question was, do I have any builds that I regret? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Um... Two that come to mind were, I did a Star Wars themed box. I think I shot a video on it. I don't know if I did or not. With the word Star Wars on the front. Um, actually on the back, I had the speakers in the front. It was black with silver. I had the Rebel symbol on one side. The Empire uh, symbol on the other. And I just thought, man, this is going to be a big seller. And nobody wanted this at all. I posted it on a Star Wars page on Facebook. And they pretty much just laughed at it. So... Looking back now, I could have done a better job on it. Maybe put some stars around it or a different design. But it just, it flopped. Uh, another one I did was, I did a Texas Rangers themed box. Thinking a lot of people, um, Texas Rangers are real big in North Texas, the baseball team. And that one flopped. Um, the other one, I regret doing There's Duke. We'll answer Duke's question in a minute. Hello, Duke. I did was, I came up with the idea of building a light box where I'd have an ammo can with two lights mounted in the center, and two lights on top that were adjustable, USB ports, a big battery. It'd be like an emergency uh, light box to also charge your phone. Not really have a radio in it or, or Bluetooth. And it seemed like a simple idea but once I actually got to building it, it was a lot more complicated than I ever imagined. And I only built one as a prototype. That's one thing that I do, and this is a lesson for you builders out there, is never offer anything for sale that you've never done before or you don't have, haven't done something similar. You don't have the confidence to do it. Now, I have done things I've never done before. But I'll get to that in a minute, but you got to be 100% confident in what you're doing. So, that's my regrets. Um, one question was, how old is Duke? Duke is 11. And I've had Duke since he was three days, uh, three weeks old. He was born to a stray on my front porch. My old, my old place I used to live. And um, I've had Duke for 11 years now. He's my buddy. And he's a cool cat. And um, we might do some, um, some facts about Duke one day. But one thing funny about Duke is Duke is actually very shy in person. Um, he's got to get to know you before he'll come to you. And if anybody knocks on the door, Duke is terrified of the front door. He kind of looks around a little bit. But 
I can't fool him. I've tried. So anyway, so there's that. Um, next question I got. What was my most challenging build? Well, I've had some that have really been kicked my butt before as far as just you work on them and nothing's going right. But the one that was actually probably the most difficult, and I do have a video on it, was I had a gentleman come to me, and his hobby is going to drive in movie theaters, and they have movie marathons on the weekends. And he wanted some sort of a waterproof outdoor surround sound system that he could set up at the drive-in movie theater and play the movies through the system and a lot of the drive-in movie theaters now broadcast on the fm band so we put a radio in it and we had a big subwoofer and i've never done a subwoofer build before in its own way a separate ammo cam with all the controls and all the batteries and the radio and then we had speaker ports on the back and we had two 6 by 9s and waterproof boxes that went out like satellite speakers. And in the center, we had a truck box with a big 10-inch weatherproof uh, subwoofer in it as well. And um, that one was very, very challenging. It was a lot of work. It was actually the biggest and the most expensive build I've ever done. It was uh, cost quite a bit of money to build it. I'm not going to say how much for privacy reasons. But it was it was expensive. It was expensive. So, I'd say that was probably the most challenging build that I've done. The other one that was pretty challenging was the one, if you guys go back and look at my old videos that are maybe a couple of years old, I was asked to build a sound system for a 1978 Jeep that had no radio, had to be waterproof, and what it made out of ammo cans. It was similar to the one I just mentioned, the surround sound box. And um, that was a challenge. That was a challenge. But um, that was pretty cool. Um, so the question was, what kind of reactions do, people, do I hear when people find out these are handmade? Um, a lot of people give me a lot of positive feedback, uh, especially on my Facebook page and when I do some advertising on Facebook. Um, a lot of people think they're really cool. I do get people laugh at them once in a while, and that's okay. I can't please everybody, but a lot of people think they're unique and amazing, and I have met a lot of people in person that I've delivered my builds to, and all of them have just been so happy and so excited and just blown away. And I get lots of um, emails and messages from people that once they get their build, they're just so happy and they just can't believe how much better it sounds in person versus on the the video and how cool it is and um, a lot of positive feedback I did I only had one negative reaction I did get a never negative reaction once when I had a lady that was local and she asked me to do an Oklahoma box and I told her the price I think it was 250 something like that and I told her how big it was and it was a 50 cal, and when I showed up with it, she was shocked how small it was, and she was actually mad. And I told her, I said, I said, ma'am, if it was any bigger, it was going to cost over $300. And she just, she was pretty ticked off. Never heard from her again, so I don't know what happened. I mean, the build was nice, but it was a 50 cal with four-inch speakers. I think she was expecting something like a 40 millimeter, but for $250, it's just not going to happen. Um, I do charge a lot for these, but, and, you know, and I, like I said before, you can go to Best Buy. I, matter of fact, I was at Academy Sports and Outdoors today. I saw a whole rack of different Bluetooth speakers. And yeah, you can get a Bluetooth speaker, but you're not going to get one like mine that are unique. And also mine can be repaired. So if, if you buy a Bluetooth speaker at the store and it breaks, you got to throw it away. You got a paperweight or a doorstop. Um. Matter of fact, I'm working on repairs on one right now for a guy. And because it's under warranty, I'm doing it for no charge. And I'm actually going to be doing that tomorrow. So that's another cool thing from buying for me. Also, these are unique. So speaking of unique, let me show you what we got here. That's all the questions I have. I'm disappointed I didn't get a lot of questions, but that's okay. That's okay. Maybe we'll do another question and answer in the future. Um, Duke, you're going to have to move so I can show people what's going on. There you go. Hope this is recording. Yep, it is. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, here is the first of many uh, mini kegs that I did. And some things I'm happy about, some things I'm not happy about. So I'll tell you the good parts parts first. I was able to fit a 6,000 milliamp battery in here, and I got the amp with the control knobs on the outside. I have um, five and a quarter inch kickers that fit. Now this one sits a little proud, but it's still there. There's a trick to getting that to work. This one fits flush on uh, this side. Of course, there's the tap where you fill it in. It does have a voltage gauge on here with the switch, and it's got some feet that it sits on. Now, let me tell you some changes I'm going to make. Um, you guys can probably notice automatically it sticks out this dent right here. Um, what happened was I have a bench with um, these clamps built into it. And I had it sitting like this, and I had the clamps coming in to hold it so I could drill the holes in the top here. Now, this hole was more challenging than the bottom hole. I'd use a jigsaw on this hole just because of the way the can is designed. I used a hole saw on the bottom here. So when I clamped it down, it's a very small surface. And this, I'm so used to ammo cans. This, this is very soft aluminum, so it dented. I pushed the dent out best I could. Pardon me, I gotta take a drink. But I just wasn't happy with the result. So, um, I came up with an idea. So, I went to the hardware store this evening. And I'm going to take a piece of wood and make like a U-shape in it. And I'm going to put some foam that will cradle around this on both sides. Like half circles. And will hold it steady, but it won't crush the aluminum. It will spread the, the pressure out instead of just on one point. And that'll stop it from denting, because I know that doesn't look too good. So that's one change. So I've, I've actually already ordered another uh, can. I'm going to take all the parts out of this one, put it in the next one. Um, the next thing is, these feet are larger than what I expected. Um, these are like you see on the bottom of a chair, the bottom of a cane. These are one inch, and I don't like them. They look big and bulky, so I actually ordered some of these half inch feet and you can see the difference is, is night and day I think it's going to look a whole lot more pleasing so I'm going to use the, the smaller feet on there and I'm also going to put them out here to the edges instead of this close in so it'll be a lot more uh, stable as well I mean it's stable now but I think it would look better with the feet out there on the ends the other thing I don't like is this handle um uh, I just put that on there because the guy that I'm learning how to make these from, he had a handle on his. And once I put it on, I kind of regret it. So I'm not going to put a handle because you can carry this thing around. You can carry like a football if you want. And it's real easy to carry, so you don't need a handle to... And plus, once you set this, you're probably going to leave it there for a while. So you don't really need a handle on it. So we're getting rid of the handle. Um, I use this rocker switch. It's loose. I don't like it. I mean, it works, but I'm not I'm not too happy with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a push button switch, but I'm going to move it probably off to the side or back here somewhere in the back where it looks a lot more pleasing. And also I'm going to have USB ports with the voltage gauge. Like I said, and plus the plug goes in. I'm going to move it down here where it's out of the way. And also this fill valve is going to be on the bottom. Um, the reason this is this is so sloppy is I rushed it. I was we had a hurricane come through on Monday night, Tuesday. I was bored, and I really had been wanting chomping at the bit to get this project done. And I rushed it, and I just wanted to throw it together as quick as I could. I didn't take my time like I should have. And I'm just not happy with the results. Now, that being said, let me show you what I am happy with. This thing sounds unbelievable. And it's also extremely loud. Now, I did line the inside with dyno mat. Unfortunately, I can't show you that. But I tell you what, the next video, when I have the other one, I will have this one apart. I'll show you the inside. I did line the inside with the dyno mat. 
and this thing sounds incredible. I mean, it just sounds amazing, and it's extremely loud. Now, I know you won't be able to get the full effect on video of how loud, because I can't turn it up that loud, especially if disturb my neighbors, but man, this thing would be great for a backyard get-together. Um, if you guys um, have a garage, I think I'm going to have to have a Hardy logo on there. If this is a man cave or a bar or whatever, backyard barbecue, this thing is perfect. It's loud. It's extremely loud. I I'm shocked. These five and a quarter inch kicker, man, they put out some sound. So, and it'll run a good seven to eight hours on a charge as well. So, that's the changes I'm going to make. But, keeping in with our Saturday Night Jam session, we're going to go ahead and crank this thing up. So, let me go ahead and get the song ready. Like some Pink Floyd. And let's crank this thing up and see what you think. <laughs>
right, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. The mini keg. 2.0, I should say 1.0. And we're going to make this new and improved. But I, I can't believe how good this thing sounds. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I've only got the volume halfway up. This thing's probably waking the neighbors up right now. So, like I said, um, you guys that are builders yourself, let me show you that no matter how long you've been doing this, and I've been doing this for almost five years now, you're still going to make mistakes. But that's okay. This was just a prototype to see what it takes to build it. And it's a little tricky, especially with this speaker here. You've actually got to put some plastic spacers in there. But I'll tell you guys that in public. Um, and you kind of got to angle everything because the battery sits back here. The amp kind of sits at an angle. Uh, like I said, I'm not happy with the feet, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna make it new and improved. I'm gonna take all the parts out of this one and make a nice one. Probably in about a uh, oh next Thursday or Friday. I'm also gonna paint it semi gloss black and put a silver Harley logo on there. But I'll be able to paint it any color of the rainbow. That's the cool thing about it. So we'll see how it takes paint too. So thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you for all the questions. Hope I answered them the way you wanted me to. And uh, y'all have a great weekend. More videos coming up soon. I've got a lot of projects I'm working on right now, including rebuilding this. We've got a lot going on. So thank y'all so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. And we'll see you next time.